Welcome back to the Smart Build Implementation Series. This is part one, framing. For today's session, we'll be going through framing and setting up the framing parts in your model. So when you go to settings at the top, you can find the setup wizard, and this takes us into our setup wizard menu. Click on the framing tab. And again, we're looking at our generic database here. So when you start out with a, a new database, you sign up with Smart Build, we start you out with something that looks like this. So if, if your system doesn't look like this, it just may mean it's had some changes made um, before you accessed it. But yeah, looking at the first item here on the list, keep in mind when we set up your framing parts, um, this is your database, so you can change it as you need to. And all these parts in here, they can be changed, they can be deleted, you could rename them, you can make them your own. And sometimes it's easier to do that versus starting completely with a, a fresh uh, empty slate. So looking at a Spruce 2 before, or the term here is SPF. So you could change this description, um, you could completely clear this out, type in whatever you want. It may be just Spruce 2 by 4 and it could be it could be whatever part number you want. So we really recommend um, if your part number system works like this, where we have an LF or a lineal foot listed out as part of the part number, we recommend uh, using that system that we have in place for you. So if not, um, sometimes your part numbers for a 2 before may be uh, one, two, three, four, five, or a number-based system. And if that's the case, um, this SKU system doesn't work the best for you, but you can still uh, utilize our vendor SKU column and make that happen. So your vendor SKUs may be one, two, three, four, uh, maybe for a 14-footer, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that can be different uh, depending on how your part number system is set up. If you don't have a part number system, and you just want to uh, kind of use the system that Smart Build has in place for you to get started, you're, you're welcome to do that. But either way, uh, the first recommendation is if this part number system works for you, um, whether you, you can change this if you want, maybe it's for 2 before it's 2x4 or, you know, SP, it could be anything. So the main thing to understand is you can change this code and it will combine and replace this LF with the curly brackets gets replaced with the, the length here. So if we go into a job and we just look at how that is shown in the job review, like looking at my framing parts. So my, my part number is 24 and then I have a 16. So my code is actually 24 and it's replacing the LF with the 16. So if we go back into the setup wizard, it makes a little more sense. So as you're, as you're setting these up, again, you're, you're completely free to set these up, um, change this SKU, and make it your own, change the description. Now getting to the width and the depth, um, this dimension, these two dimensions are used to render the item in 3D. So as we go back to the 3D view and we look at this, this um, project here, so I have a two by four wall girt. And if you look at this in 3D, that's basically saying this is three and a half inches tall, it's an inch and a half deep. And again, that is another reason why, hey, it's easier to, to use the items that we have in here, just change the name of them and leave them in there. So you can uh, you don't have to know what this dimension is. So if you were setting this up from scratch, you, you may not know that the width is actually the width, what we call the width, and the depth is the depth. So this just helps you understand that. And again, it could be any different framing part. This just simplifies the process. So when we get down to supplier ID, this is something that you can use to put in a, a supplier specific code. So if you buy this from a certain lumber yard or you, you store it in your, your yard, or maybe it's an in stock item, you can, you can put an ID in here. And this ID just helps when we get to the, to the final steps of the setup where we're creating reports. If you if you want a report from a certain job and maybe there's a lumber report, you just want to order the lumber off of that job, you could have a specific ID just for a certain supplier and it would create a custom report 
of only items that contain that supplier ID. So moving on here, like the selling unit, another case where for lumber, we're not, we're not changing this. It's just an each item and the quantity is one. We'll get, we'll get into the selling unit and the quantity per selling unit with some of the other items that we set up, not, not so much with lumber. You can also set the color of the lumber. We even have some steel colors in here for our steel databases and then the dimension, the profile. Now, if you're actually not setting up a wood frame database and maybe you're doing a steel setup, yours may look a little bit different. When we look at that setup wizard, maybe you have all steel parts. So again, this, this training series, it should work just as well for you. Um, when we look at these items, they may look a little bit different, have different codes, different names, different dimensions, um, different colors, and they also may have different profiles. So dimensional lumber, think of that as a square rectangular profile depending on the, the width and the depth. Other items are actually drawn in the 3D model according to this profile here. So you can, you can use these settings to control and show what that looks like. So if we look at a, a red um, eye beam in the job, you can see this has a profile of an eye, eye shaped, and that's coming from this, this eye beam profile. So if I would change that to a Z or a back-to-back -back Z, it would change it in, in the model. And you can always play around with these and see what they look like by changing them here, saving it, just opening up a test job and, and testing that item out. So back to the original um, part here of setting up a spruce 2x4. Now, when we get to the next section here, it says usages. And usages, these, there are probably over 100 usages in Smart Build. And you may not know what these all are. Uh, don't stress about this too much. Um, in a later in a later session, when we're setting up your framing rules, you can you can dial these in. Um, if you do kind of adopt the items that we have, chances are these usages are going to be very close to correct um, just out of the box because this was a a working database. It, it works. Um, so any any place that you're using a, a two before, chances are if you're setting up a post frame database, you're going to use it as a GERT and maybe a Perlin. Not, not for all jobs, but maybe you want it in there and that you can select it to be used as a GERT on any given uh, project. So moving on to the, to the next part here on the bottom, we have part links. So for part links, you can, you can delete these part links out of here, the ones that are in here, and maybe start with fresh list. Maybe you offer a, an eight foot part and your price for it is $7. You can set a cost and a price. The cost and price can be the same if you're just operating like on a retail uh, catalog, everything's retail, or you can actually enter a, an actual cost of what you buy it for and what you want to resell it for. That's optional. And then you can enter the weight. So if you know the weight of your eight foot two before, you could put a weight in, um, we'll say it's 10 pounds. I'm just guessing. So we have, we have this filled out and then we could go ahead and add another part length. So the next part length may be 10 and so on and you could change the price for it and so on now if you if you just want to use our part links that we have here um, and they've been added on to that's why they're a little bit out of order or if you want to delete any of these certain part links like let's say for example these links you offer all of them except you don't sell 14 footers so you can just delete the 14 off the list and now this list is accurate for you and obviously we can we can add in the pricing here during the setup process, you're welcome to enter a price here. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's crucial because we have a pricing, um, we'll have a pricing video that you can watch and how to update your pricing. And we can do all your pricing in a single file upload. So whether you do it here or not, it's not that important, but you can, you can update the prices by double clicking here. So when you're done setting up uh, the SKU, the description, uh, the width and depth and these settings here and then your usages and part lengths, you can click save and then that item will be updated. So just because we click save there does not mean that the database has been updated just yet. So if you notice at the bottom of the page, we have a save all. So as you're working through here, if you make a few changes and you just want to save your progress, you may want to go ahead and click save all and return and then come back in. It just saves your place, and, and if something, if your browser crashes, you don't lose all that data. 
So for another example, let's look at a maybe a post or a column, a treated six by six that we have in here. So if you were setting up your posts, again, the dimension has been pretty filled out. Maybe your six by sixes aren't this size or um, they may be a true six by six. Um, whatever that is, you can you can change that here. You could change the name again, change the SKU. Same process. The links, you may want to add more links. So we could type in maybe you offer a 26 footer and you have a price for it in a way. Uh, maybe you offer a 28. And each time that you click add, you do have to scroll down because it adds it and it's it's a bit off the bottom of the screen, but you can scroll down and you can see it get added here. So when you get all your links added here, and that changes to 30 and I save this. So again, go through this entire database, um, change the SKUs, change the part numbers and the description and just work your way through this list. Any items that you look at and you say, well, I don't have access to this product, I will never sell it or my name is different, you're welcome to delete it or rename it to some other product and, and just change that. So. Again, this, this is just here to help you. You're not forced to use it in any way if it is a hindrance and it slows down your process. So the, this, is, this is one way that you can tackle this part of it. So another way that you could look at this is, well, I would rather work in Excel. If, if that's true for you, you can download this, this file, CSV file or an XLS file, and you can open this file up and, and look at the data that we have there for you. So when you first look at it in Excel, it may be a bit confusing, but we can we can open this up here, and we can look at we can look at the file um, that we have here. So in the Excel file, um, you'll notice we have the SKU, the description, uh, the dimensions, and all that. And if you look at that file, one thing um, it's it's all the same data. Uh, it is expanded out, but it's everything that's in in your framing. So when you look at each each individual part. It has all the links, so it's almost seven items in one. So back on the other menu, when you look at the menu in here, it's it's much easier to look at it and kind of see it all at once. And if you look at it in Excel, each link is expanded out into a separate line item. So the last part of this session, we want to look at a random link framing item. So we were talking about items here that are all part length. Uh, you probably sell them in eight or 10, 12 foot lengths like we talked about. Um, now items that maybe engineered lumber, like an LVL, if you sell any of those, may be a little bit different in the way you price and sell them. An example here, we'll look at this nine inch, nine and a half inch LVL. And if you notice, part lengths are toggled off. So it, it's not highlighted here. I don't have any part lengths listed. I just have a lineal foot price. So if part lengths are turned off, which this works just as well to have items that work this way. You can have a running foot price and a weight per foot. And to look at the difference and how this works in a job it may explain it a little bit better, but jumping over into a, an actual project, um, and we can use a trust, trust carrier as an example. So if we set our trust carrier to be this nine and a half inch LVL, since now it is a running foot item, Smart build looks at that and says, okay, I can, I can run the entire length of the building or however far I need to go because this part, it never ends. Think of it that way. Um, so that's where this truss carrier length overrides comes in. And if you, if you do use a random length part, no matter where you're using it, um, if it's something that's very long where you wouldn't want to ship it longer, as long as what smart build's calculating it, you could use these overrides fields. So when I look at my project, I can see I have a carrier, but it's going full length. And if we go into drawings and look at how that's set up, just jumping over into drawings here, you can see that it has a full length carrier. It says two 80 foot truss carriers. Obviously probably not something we want to do. We don't want to ship it out that way. So we could set this to, to cut the part length in the job. And anytime you're entering different dimensions in here, you can have you can enter more than one field. In this case, I just added a 16. If I wanted it to give it to give it several different options, depending on the project, I may have a few different wings in the project. 16 may not always be the best length. I could I could put in some additional lengths, maybe eight feet, 10 feet, 
and 16 and 20. And when you enter these dimensions, always just enter by decimal feet. So it's a number, comma, number, comma, number, and repeat that until you have all your available lengths. When you do that, then SmartBook knows, okay, that's how, those are all the ways that I can cut this, this material and try to be as efficient as I can be. So this trust carrier overrides, this is true. We have this override settings for other items like skirt boards. Um, and if, if you have, you offer a framing part in 10 different lengths in your catalog, but you only ever want to use it in one length for that certain usage, like skirt boards, maybe you only want to ever use it as 16 footers, you could set that here. Parlance, kind of the same case. You have your overrides in here. And again, this is kind of getting further into the setup, but the, the reason I'm showing this now is just so you understand the difference of part lengths versus random lengths and smart build supports them either way. Um, again, when you get done updating all these or uploading or downloading your files, you click the save all button and at that point you can continue on. So thanks for watching our framing section and we'll talk soon.